Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video, vlog number seven. And we continue onward with the VW discussion, the vintage VW scene, bringing this content to you and the goings on at my shop. Uh, so before we get going, of course, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share this out there, get the message out there, let's keep our dubs on the road and keeps us going here. Uh, and if you can, for the price of a cup of coffee, can you possibly send us a small donation? Uh, a small one, doesn't have to be anything major. Uh, it's in the PayPal uh, donation link below the, uh, the video in the description. And uh, if not, no biggie. Uh, this is just our way of uh, continuing this content and continuing week after week and providing you guys. So uh, whatever you guys can provide is fine with us and we thank you. So where are we? Oh my God, July 12th, uh, summer's moving right along. And uh, I was not, I didn't come around last week because of the 4th of July weekend. That was a nice uh, four day weekend that I actually took. Uh, it was a nice little breather. Uh, but last week was pa uh, packed in in the last, uh, you know, uh, three days there before Thursday. Uh, I had three cars get shipped in. Uh, two of them came from one client. Um, and he came, he drove all the way from South Dakota. And he had a 30 foot trailer and he brought. And he brought this uh, these cars to me. One of them's a '61 convertible, and the other one's a '57 oval uh, sedan. And he brought a ton of parts with them as well. And they had, they have had some sort of um, uh, restorations in the past. Uh, so it was uh, really cool to see that a lot of the hard work is done on them. So pretty amazing stuff. And uh, I'm gonna have a video on those deliveries. I also had a beautiful '55 three-fold ragtop come to me guys I, mean, I know when I say uh, you know these cars are becoming harder and harder to find I definitely do still believe that uh, I would not have found this car um, the family called me once again it's one of those stories again where the family called me and the father died last year who owned the car they've owned the, they were the second owner since 1966 and so they called me up and the father died and then the mom has some medical issues right now and uh, I guess she has a little bit of a dementia issue and um, which is sad you know because I see some of that and you know my grandma and grandpa whatever they uh, like my nana's especially you know they they had a little bit of that dementia stuff and it's scary you know it's sad um, so I got this car shipped in now this is a late 55 and I want to do a video separate uh, just on late 55 because in America uh, 55 Beetle, I mean, pretty much around the world, but in America especially, 55 Beetle is, a, as they call the quote-unquote, the bastard year, because it was the first year where uh, Volkswagen was uh, making the following year, so say, for example, 56 year came in August. Uh, prior to that, all the Beetles went from basically January to December, and that was the year of the, the Beetle. Uh, but 55 was the first year where they ended that in August and then the following year came in August. So a 56 Beetle, you could pick up a 56 Beetle in August of that year, a 55. Um, so they, they went to the next year. So basically a 55 is a very short year uh, for Beetle. Um, and what's funny is, is that in America, they started changing the characteristics of the Beetle in 55 a few times. Uh, so, you know, in early 55, you had those egg tail lights. You still had semaphores, uh, but then until around May or so, um, they went to the bullet uh, front turn signals on the front fenders, and you also had then the honeycomb uh, tail lights, so the tail light got bigger. But you still had the rib doors, you still had the batwing steering wheel, you still had that, you know, um, early. Uh, oval or say you know split window style doors uh, so uh, it's a very short year so in, in essence I mean that car is, is kind of rare uh, and remarkably the car got shipped into us all intact original every panel on its original uh, looks like they did one respray on it at one point in time uh, to red the original color I can see on the dash and on the inside is straddle silver very popular color but what perplexes me and maybe you guys can help me out with this communication. Um, 
I tore apart the seat upholstery that they they had some seat covers that they threw on it at one time uh, something not Volkswagen really it might have been something you could pick up at a your local uh, auto auto uh, parts store um, but underneath was the like a gray the gray cloth with the uh, like a blue piping it looks like now I was under the impression all American bound cars for the most part I guess I'm wrong for the most part were vinyl so I was expecting underneath those covers to either see that red vinyl which was very common with Strato silver or you have you know maybe the light beige with the brown piping uh, which was also common for Strato uh, when it came to America so you got the vinyl uh, but the fact that you had an American bound car with the, with the bullet front turn signals was I was only American bound and then the rear tail lights going early before most of the the rest of the country because in Europe they still kept the semaphores and they still kept hard tail lights um, on the 55 year until the until they got the 56 until August so you know, uh, it, it's it's interesting to see that I got a cloth interior uh, for that Strato American Bound Beetle. Um, I was expecting the car to actually be a rock box because uh, I only saw like upper uh, um, uh, pictures on it. I did not see really much underneath. Um, they were very limited to the technology uh, or the tech capabilities, the, the last people I bought them from. So um, I just figured, you know, I'll go for broke, take the risk, I'll buy the car because um, I, I felt it was worth it. I mean, it was numbers matching, three-fold rag top, I, I love those. So I bought the car and sure enough, it's really remarkably solid. Um, there's a California plate on it and the expiration was in 1982. Uh, so go figure. Uh, I, from the story that I heard briefly from the son uh, was that uh, she drove with her doggy from California, I believe to Virginia and that was it in 82 so that car stayed in the garage since then so it's always been a cali car never saw any sort of uh any sort of a northeast winters really remarkable car i uh, can't wait to jump on it when am i going to jump on it i don't know guys uh i'm just <laughs> i'm so busy with client cars uh that um I, I really don't have the time to jump in on any of my cars right now so so that's what came in last week which was pretty damn cool um Three bugs that came in, really remarkable stuff. Uh, this week, um, Bill finally picked up his 66 sunroof beetle, so I waved goodbye to that that bad boy. Uh, he's a great client. He's bought another beetle from us before in the past, and uh, really just a, just a great guy. I meet some of the most interesting people uh, through this business. He's a pi He was a pilot back in his day, and you just hear some great stories from many of these guys, and uh, it's really, really remarkable. So um, one of the questions I wanted to bring up that I got in an email was about, uh, Chris, can you talk about Super Beetles? Um, why really you don't work on them and do you not like them? And you know, I, I, I've said this before in the past, uh, Super Beetles, I, I love Super Beetles. My first Beetle was a Super Beetle and that was my first car, my first Volkswagen. Uh, so I, I don't mind the Super Beetles at all. I think I've just gotten so accustomed to the earlier Beetles the smaller nose, you know, um, the King and Linkman front end, the bull joint front end, uh, that sort of thing. Um, I have nothing against them. Um, I think generally their value has not creeped up as fast as, say, a standard Beetle. So in the end, it does come down to dollars and cents. You know, I, I part of me does this, of course, a big part of me does this for the passion and for the pride to own these cars. But in the end, it also does come down to dollars and cents. Uh, you know, if I kept doing Beatles or restorations where the value wasn't there and I'm dumping the same money, the same time and effort into the car, uh, I probably would be out of business. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, look, if a client comes to me and wants a Super Beetle to be done, I'll do it. You know, it's sentimental to them, and it's 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 not about the value; it's about it's about the heart that they love for the car. Uh, so that's fine. But I will tell you, if you noticed recently, I put on my Facebook page. I'm probably going to post it also on my my website. There was an article that came out, I think this week or last week, uh, the 50 most valuable Beetles that sold at auction. And some really high dollar stuff, guys. So, I mean, if there's people out there that are scoffing at what these Beetles go for, I mean, 
this is a nice list that shows what these Beetles are going for. And for the most part, when you look at these cars, they're exceptional Beetles. Um, and you know, whether they're early Beetles all the way even to the Super Beetles, so you'll see Super Beetles in that list, guys, the late Super Beetles. I'm seeing 30, 40, 50 grand, some of them, over 50 grand. Why? Because they're unrestored. These are unrestored examples. These are cars that have very low mileage. I'm talking, some of them have like 700 miles, 750 miles, 1200 miles. And why is this? Well, because back in the day, from what I heard, um, the dealerships knew that Volkswagen was phasing out the Beetle so dealers were buying these cars to hold on to them thinking that eventually they were going to go up in value yeah of course you know 40 years later whatever you know 30 40 years later they're uh, they're going up in value um so those are the exceptions when you restore a super beetle and strip it down and restore it back to it could be in the mintest condition uh it's very rare that you'll see the car go for that those prices it's when they're unrestored right now at this point in time so that's what I saw and also if you take a look at that list one of my bugs is actually in that list guys It's one of my first um, uh, restos that I did on an early car before I even had my shop and I sold that car knowing that if I did sell this car I'm gonna have to get a shop because where I was uh, living um, it was in sort of sort of a gated community and the H HOA uh, Know, homeowners association was telling me look you got to stop doing business here you got to stop doing ripping motors out in this one car garage in this community that we like to keep nice so that was the uh the straw that broke the camel's back really that uh, i had to say look i got to get a shop now so you'll see it it's a 54 in there that uh, that i did and uh billy old billy joel armstrong actually bought that um so that was pretty interesting too i and, and i had no idea he bought it uh from me uh, I think uh, he probably had a representative to call me to buy it for him. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, if you don't know, he's uh, the guy from Green Day, the singer from Green Day. Um, so that's what uh, that's how I feel about Super Beetles. I have nothing against them. I think they're great cars. I mean, uh, we're coming up into that time period now where people had the history with the Super Beetles and growing up with them. So, you know, maybe they'll start to turn and start showing appreciation. Uh, but I still see them as the slower uh, bug that's uh, appreciating. Um, what else I want to talk about? What happened uh, this week was a real surprise to me. Um, I knew the be the new Beetle was uh, ending, right? Uh, the new I had a 2016 Beetle and a 2013 Beetle, so the newer second generation or third generation Beetle, um, the di the different uh, body style that changed in 20 2012, um, ended. So if you guys don't know, last year CBS uh, Morning News did a piece on me with Don Taylor and this was last June in 2018 and they shot footage in 2017 for my full cruise um, so they did a piece on me last year when the so-called new Beetle was gonna have its last year so they kind of incorporated the two stories so they kind of grabbed the new Beetle story ending and then threw my shop in there in the mix and they always go back to the old Beetle I, sometimes it's a little confusing to people because then I was getting calls and texts from people saying, "Hey, Chris, you're running, you're, you're you're closing up shop," and I'm like, "No, it's the new Beetle that's ending, not my shop. They just they came here to kind of reference the old Beetle to the new Beetle." So, anyways, it was a great piece. They did a good a good shot on our shop, and uh, that was a national story on on CBS Morning News. Uh, so, sure enough, yesterday or the other day, uh, two days ago. I was getting texts and, and emails at night, like around 10, 10 o'clock at night on my time, New York, that I was on TV again. And I was like, for what? And sure enough, CBS ran another piece that the last new Beetle uh, the, uh, drove off the assembly line. Uh, I guess that was uh, July 10th. And so they basically recycled some old footage from 2018 to put into a newer piece that they did uh, the other day. A little bit shorter piece, but if you guys notice, if you ever look at the two pieces from last year and this year, um, much of the video in there and the pictures of the Beatles that were restored are mine. Um, and the videos as well. So the full cruise videos, that's all my stuff that I shot. So they literally, they did grab them with my permission, of course, they asked and 
you know, they grabbed my footage from YouTube and or I supplied them the, uh, the full HD copies of those videos along with the pictures of my cars that I restored. So I thought that was really cool to see a lot of my stuff there uh, on CBS, right? Uh, pretty cool spot. And look, guys, they found me because I got a YouTube channel. I get out there, I do this every week and educate you guys, give you how-tos, and I've been doing it for so many years now. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of shops will call me and say, hey Chris, how, the, how are you doing and how did you get on the news? And I said, well, because I do videos, I, I do videos for, you know, for free on my own time, you know, and a lot of guys, I guess, I don't know, they, they could didn't really understand that, um, you know, doing stuff for free. I'm like, well, you got to give back. I got to give back to, to get, you know, so I figured, you know, in the beginning, I'll, I'll do this stuff. I'll give these how-tos to the VW community and that comes back to you and it comes back in a, in a great way, you know, we, so that's how you do it. You know, you want to get recognition, you got to get yourself out there and that's the way they're going to find you. You know, um, it's very hard for you to go to them to try to get any sort of publicity. Now, there's been some comments that like, you know, they did mention in the video that I'm one of the last shops to do Volkswagen restoration. Look, I don't, I don't script this stuff, guys. So, you know, they put out there what they want to put out there that makes it meaningful for their program. Um, so, uh, you know, I know there's other shops out there that do Beetle restoration. And yeah, so, but I think the only thing that I would maybe argue was, I mean, guys, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I think I'm one of the only shops that just does the Beetle. There might be more that just do the Beetle, but I only do the Beetle. I don't do the Gia, I don't do the bus, I don't do the thing, I don't do any other Volkswagen but the Beetle. So uh, maybe there's an argument there. Um, but that's it, I, I thought it was a great piece. We had two very cool weeks here um, at the shop. Um, Last week before 4th of July, it was really remarkable to get three bugs, three projects, three rare cars to come in like that, um, especially the 55 Ragtop. That's pretty damn cool uh, to get that. I'm very fortunate, very grateful for all this. I mean, these cars come to me. I, I rarely have to search online anymore for them because they seem to be coming to me because um, I, I got the, the videos out there. I'm out there. I'm trying to the best I can to provide you guys with the content. So, all right. Uh, vlog number seven in the bag uh, we are done i just got to my shop i'm ready to have a cappuccino it's friday and i'm looking for another good weekend finally the sun is nice and, and out and time to go to the beach maybe so all right guys chris from classic vwbugs.com and like always please uh like subscribe hit that notification bell i'd love to uh keep providing you guys this content you get that signal uh, that I posted a new video. So if you guys uh, want to comment anything that I said, please do it in the uh, description below. And uh, I will see you next time. Take care. Um.